In this part of the lesson, we'll use a for next loop to process a range of cells by counting through the row numbers and column numbers of that range. Let's start by opening the file that you've downloaded and extracted, and then if necessary, click the enable content button to allow any existing code to run. We have a list of names of cartoon characters and our job is to construct a full name as currently shown in column D here by using the values in columns A, B and C for each row. Let's begin by clicking the clear names button to get rid of any existing full names and then head into the developer tab, open the visual basic editor, if necessary, open module one by double clicking on it. And then let's create a new subroutine called process name list sub process name list. We'll begin by creating a loop to count through the rows of data in the table. Let's declare three variables to help with that. I'll start with a variable called row num as long and we'll use the row num variable to count through the rows of the table. We'll declare two other variables, one called first row and that will store the number of the first row of data and that will be a long as well. And finally, last row, which will, as you probably guessed, contain the number of the last row of the table and we'll set that to be a long data type as well. Now we can set the values of the first row and last row variables. We can see from the table in Excel that the first row of data below the column headers starts in row number two. So we'll assume that that's always going to be the case for this example. Let's set the first row variable to be equal to the number two. The last row of data is currently in row number 11, but we can't guarantee that the size of the list won't change later. So let's find the row number of the cell at the bottom of the list using the end property of a range. We can say last row equals range a1 dot end xl down and then we can refer to the row property of that cell. So that returns the row number of the last row of the table. Now we can configure a for next loop to count through the first row to the last row. We can say for row num equals first row to last row, a couple of blank lines and then say next row num. To demonstrate that the loop is working, we can add some code to print the value of a cell to the immediate window. So let's head inside the loop and say debug.print and then we can use the cells property to refer to a cell using its row number and column number. I can say cells and then to set the row index I'll use my row num variable. I'll then just refer to column number one for convenience and then refer to the value property of that cell. If we then run the subroutine, making sure we can see the immediate window, and if not, head to the view menu and choose immediate window, or press Ctrl and G. When you run the subroutine, you should see a list of all of the values from row 2 to row 11 in the table will appear. Next, we can create a loop which counts through the column numbers for each row of data. Let's begin by declaring three new variables. We can declare col num as long and we can declare first col as long you probably get the idea at this point and finally last col as long we can assign a value of one to the first col variable as the data table starts in the first column of the worksheet column a has a corresponding number of one so let's say first col equals one the last col is going to be the last populated column in the table. I want to do this by using the end property to find the last populated column. I'm going to do this from range A2 rather than range A1 because there's an extra column heading there. I don't want to return column number four as the last column. I want to return column number three. So I'll start from cell A2 to do this. So to set the last col variable, I can say last col equals range a2 dot end xl to right, not to left, I beg your pardon, to right, and then refer to the column property of that cell. Now we can configure a second for next loop within the first. Let's give ourselves a blank line just below the first for row num line, and then begin a new loop by saying for col num equals 
Again, we'll use our variables first col to last col. And then we can complete the loop by saying next col num. And we must do that inside the first for next loop. Let's indent the debug.print statement. And then let's edit the constant number one. We don't want to refer to just the first column of the table. We want to refer to every column of the table. So let's replace that number one with a reference to the col num variable. At this point, we can clear the contents of the immediate window. I'm going to click into it, press Control A, followed by delete. And then I can run the subroutine again. And this time we'll see that we get the values from every cell in the table, one after the other. Now that we can access the value of each cell, we can add the code to build the full name for each character. Let's start by declaring a new string variable to help with that. Let's say dim full name as string. We can then edit the code inside the loop by replacing the debug.print statement with one which changes the value of the full name variable. So let's replace debug.print with full name equals full name followed by an ampersand to concatenate the value of the next cell. We also want to separate out the values of each cell by using a space. So at the end of that line, let's concatenate a literal space character. This code will add an unnecessary space at the end of the full name, but we can remove this by using the trim function after we've finished constructing the full name. So let's provide ourselves with an extra blank line between the next statements, between next col num and next row num. In there, we can say full name equals, and then we can use the trim function to trim off any leading or trailing spaces. So we can say trim full name. Now that we've constructed the full name, we need to write it into the relevant cell in the worksheet before we proceed to the next row. Let's add another line of code to write out the full name into the appropriate cell. We can say cells row num, followed by if we know how big the table will be and we can guarantee that the name always needs to go into column D, we could just hard code the number four here. If we weren't sure how many columns the table would contain and we always want our new full name to appear at the very end of the table, we could say last col plus one. We can then modify the value property of that cell and make it equal to full name. Before we proceed to the next row and construct the next name, we just want to make sure that we've cleared the contents of the full name variable. So let's say full name equals an empty string. We can now test the subroutine by running it and switching into the Excel window and making sure that column D has a list of completed names from each row. Do make sure that you clear the name list before you run the subroutine again, because I've calculated the last column using row two. If column D is already populated, what will happen if I run the macro from the macros button is that the last column will be treated as column D, so the new names go into column E, and so on and so on and so on. It may be worthwhile clearing the names or even making a call to the clear names method at the start of your process name list method. If I switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, we already have the subroutine written which clears the existing names. So before anything happens in the process name list subroutine, we could say clear existing names. And that would make sure that we don't risk extending our table columns.